Around 2500 BC, a new culture arrived in Britain known as the Beaker culture, and it brought with it a whole new range of people, cultures, technology, and also burial rites. And one of these really important technologies was metalworking. So for the first time in the British Isles, we have copper, bronze, and gold working. Now Somerset's great because it has access to lots of raw materials. So between Somerset, Devon, and Cornwall, there is access to tin, copper, lead, and gold, which means that the metalworking in this area is really rich and we can learn an enormous about, amount about the communities that lived here from looking at the metal objects that they produced. The Bronze Age in Somerset ran from about 2500 to 2000 down to about 800 BC and Somerset, you know, looked quite different in the Bronze Age to the way that it looks now. As in the Neolithic period, there was land clearing going on. So what had begun earlier in the late Stone Age really continued through the Bronze Age as forest and marshland and woodland was cleared to make way for more farming and more permanent settlements. The climate in Bronze Age Somerset was relatively similar to how it is now. Uh, lots of seasonal flooding, a much milder, wetter environment to what had existed previously in the Mesolithic and Paleolithic periods. So where did people live in Bronze Age Somerset? In the early Bronze Age, as previously in the Neolithic, people are living in these relatively temporary uh, group settlements with uh, small shelters and a few post-built houses. However, by the time we get to the Middle Bronze Age, we see the introduction of roundhouses, these larger domestic spaces that we see dotted across the country, really. And one of the really great examples of sites that have a domestic character, which also feature these, these sort of stone roundhouses, is Brindown in North Somerset. And this is one of the most intensely excavated Bronze Age sites in Somerset, and it has four phases of development, two of which are of real interest to us. So the early phase of occupation comprises a single oval-shaped stone-built house, and the second phase comprises two houses that were built into the hillside at Brindown. And there have been numerous associated finds, pottery. We also know that there was an enormous amount of animal bone found at the site. So we have cattle, sheep, deer, dog, and a single cat. People of higher status were buried in monuments known as barrows in the Bronze Age. And these are big, tumulus-shaped interventions in the landscape. Uh, some of the key examples of this are at Pretty Nine. Uh, and there's a, a series of nine barrows along the ridge of that area. Uh, and it's really quite a striking intervention into the landscape. We also get ring cairns. And some of the less elite burials are known as flat burials. We get cremations and inhumations taking place at this time. Barrows are the most common monument that we have from prehistory in Somerset. There are over 750 that have been documented just in this county, and there's probably numerous others that are undocumented. One of the key wetland areas in Somerset in the Bronze Age was the Brew Valley, which was a key source for fish, wildfowl, beaver, otter, and also numerous other kinds of construction materials, such as reeds and wood. And in the Brew Valley, we have what's known as the Mere Heath Track, which, like the earlier Neolithic Sweet Track, is one of the interventions in the landscape that is most interesting to us. So it runs from kind of the Polden Hills all the way through to the Bog Islands at Mere. And it's a very complex wooden system which involves brush reeds on the bottom of the peat floor and then stakes running across to create a walking platform, almost like railway sleepers, to allow people to traverse what was otherwise a very difficult landscape to exist in. Here's a selection of material from the Middle Bronze Age, and this is a period in which people are really getting to grips with this new technology of metalworking and the sort of different things that they can use bronze to make. They've really started experimenting as well as all sorts of artifact types. And we're so lucky here to be able to work with this particular large group of material, which is actually the type hoard for um, a very important period in the Middle Bronze Age archeology. span And it's known as the Taunton phase. So this hoard has come from a Victorian workhouse, which was excavated in the 1870s. 
What we've got here is the next stage in development from those flat axe heads that we saw from the early Bronze Age. And this is what's known as a palstave axe. And it's got that kind of familiar shape that we think about in terms of modern axe heads with this really flaring cutting edge here and then narrowing into quite a high stop and then this section here towards the butt. And they also have these really sweet little tiny loops on here that are just placed on the top and sometimes we get them on the bottom as well, although they often don't survive terribly well in the archaeological record. So we've got Middle Bronze Age pal staves and we have other tools as well like chisels like this one that are probably specialised woodworking tools. And it's not just tools, it's also weaponry. So this is a beautiful example of a leaf-shaped spearhead from the Middle Bronze Age and it's got these lovely channels in it that you can see here that would have really aided its flight and also caused an awful lot of damage at its target if it was ever used. We've also got this really beautiful tiny little copper alloy knife here and it's got this lovely little tang for attaching to a hilt or a handle. And it's absolutely beautiful even though its edges are somewhat damaged. So we've got tools, we've got weapons and we also have items for self-adornment, beautiful artefacts of jewellery. So this is a torque and quite often when we think about torques we tend to associate them with the Iron Age in the later period but they come in in the Bronze Age and this is a spiral torque. It's absolutely beautifully made with this really tight twisted spiral that's been used to produce it and it has these hooked terminals so it would have attached around the back of the neck. But in a way this is more about the sum of all these different parts. All of these artefacts were deliberately chosen by somebody or a group of people and placed together at a certain point within the landscape. And at another site called Eddington, we've got evidence because of the wet preservation, because of the preservation of organic material, that they were placed in a wooden container. So it's very likely that here at the Taunton Workhouse Hoard, something similar happened. These objects were gathered together, deliberately placed in the earth and covered and deposited. And it's a fascinating idea to explore with your learners. What would inspire people to do that? Why would you take these hours of work, um, these valuable raw materials, and just place them in the ground? What could be your motivation for doing that?